So I'm a big fan of learning things that I don't know. Now that could be reciprocated or at the same time, maybe you're watching this video. So you must probably reciprocate it a little bit. Anyway, what did I end up doing was going on TikTok, finding some really cool effects. I'm gonna show in today's video and hopefully you guys get to learn something, learn a new execution on something. And honestly, there's some pretty dope ones in here. So without further ado, let's hop into the video and let's just, let's open up TikTok. Just before we start, by the way, don't forget to check out the first link in the description down below to check out my everything pack, 26 custom made products made just for you guys as designers and artists. The cool part is of course we have an awesome discord community. You guys can also just check out vibe with learn from and, and just like get some critiques, all that good stuff. But it is just a single purchase. And for the rest of your entire life, you will get any product that I release free, no matter what the price is emailed directly to you guys. Join the other 7,100 and something, something plus people and I hope you enjoy it. All right, so let's watch the first effect. We have a bitmap text effect in one minute by slides. So first things first, I'm a fan of bitmap. As you guys know, I have bitmap textures. You can, of course, pick it up if you guys wish to, but all that good stuff. Uh, I like the look of it, but this time he actually uses bevel and emboss on the text layer itself. I mean, we got a bunch of layer options. Oh my God, I gotta copy all this. Little grayscale, fly on the image per usual. He runs into the bitmap at 100 output, half tone screen. I wonder what uh, shape did he use? Okay, he uses cross. That's pretty cool, okay. You can change it back to RGB. You need a grayscale first, then RGB. I didn't know that. Now he's throwing on a gradient map and the gradient map itself looks pretty freaking sexy. I can't lie, I'm a fan of the orange tones and that's that's basically it. So I got my amazing text grouping here. We have effect by Sesso, okay? First things first, we're gonna double click into our main layer, just like so, get our layer styles up. Let's make sure we reset to show all these effects. So it's Bevel and Emboss's inner, smooth. We have 1000, then he has 46 size. Then he has just about zero soften. A uh, 90 degree angle, 30 degree altitude, screens on 30 or 55, and then multiplies on 20, I'll just say 25, yeah, 25. Then we got stroke, which he has about at three pixels. Outside, 100 opacity, he actually has a color black. Then he has another stroke. This time we have the stroke size at 21, the actual color on white, a little bit of inner shadow at 100. The actual blend mode is on normal. We have zero distance, 15 choke. We got satin on multiply. The opacity is on 54, 45, 90 degree angle, 35, 54 on the size for some little bit of sound. Is the satin even noticeable? My guy's just putting effects on just for, because why not? Gradient map. Okay, so gradient map is on normal and it's at 36, I'll put it at 35 because I'm, I'm, I'm weird. And the gradient itself kind of just shows a white and we added a gray in here just like so. We add another white in this tone and then another white, pretty simple. And then last but not least, because why not? We have a little bit of outer glow. We have a normal, I'm, I think this will be helpful. 45, 51, I think the reason why this would help is just it makes this effect spread a little bit easier. And we actually have the quality range on 100, which to my, in my opinion, I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave that at like 60, I think would be best. And then what he actually ends up saying is that you should also add a bevel and emboss to all the supporting graphics. So I'll add a bevel and emboss here. Okay, so that one's good. Let's go ahead and add a bevel emboss on the word buy over here and then press okay. And now it's time for some bitmap. So of course go to image mode bitmap. We're gonna flatten this image out. All right, so now we can go in image mode bitmap. I don't know if I said bitmap last time. I meant to say grayscale, but if not, this is bitmap. Last one was grayscale. 100 output. Our method is on halftone screen. He presses OK. Then we end up using the frequency. What is it? 55, 45. Shape I usually have on round, but he uses cross, which is really cool. OK, I don't hate it. The first thing I'm noticing though is my background is also reacting to the bitmap and I wonder if it's because I actually have it on gray. Have your background actually still be pure white. And now, now I'm looking like where he was. Then he says, of course, to change it back to RGB, you need to change it to grayscale first. So image mode grayscale, press one, and then image mode RGB, image size. And then over here, well, mine didn't change. Oh, I definitely, I definitely did use a 4,000 pixel dimension document I started off with. So it did change the size a little bit. So. I'll change it to like 3000, pretty much good enough. He said, change the resampling though, to nearest neighbor, which is right here, hard edges, pressing okay. So now if I click and come back over here, oh, 
it kept it pretty well. Now I can just go ahead and add in my gradient map, just like over here. We add in, of course, the left side is always the shadows and the right side is always the highlight color. So I'll do something like this is kind of what he had over here, like a little bit of like an orange light tone up here. And then down here, I won't make it pure black. I'll give it like a nice, simple little hue. I mean, this is a pretty cool effect. I can see, let's say like apparel people using it or like for people like, like merch and whatnot, but you might still realize that I can't cut it out. And here we go. So I'll go over here and go to select color range, click on the black, just like, so we're gonna make the fuzziness all the way to like, let's say 150 right there. Once you, of course, get that little selection, you press okay. Then you come down here to where it says color solid and we're gonna make this black and I can get rid of this. And then just like that here, now you have it cut out. So you can actually move it, flex around with it and all that good stuff. So WFX slides, I appreciate it. I don't know when I'll use it, but I know now I know how to do it. There's another person known as Siana Studios who uses pretty much the same technique, but ends it off with a different like idea. So he goes through, tells you to put the inner drop shadow, all that good stuff. We kind of already have that going on for ourselves. Remove the excess. He adds a photo cop photo photocopy texture. I'll, I'll skip that part for myself. But then he goes into or image adjustments and then we use threshold and he puts his threshold level at 90 on the dot. Well, that didn't work for me. What, what did I do wrong? So he only has bevel and emboss, inner glow, stroke and drop shadow. And naturally I can't see his bevel and emboss settings, but his does look a little bit more like lighter tone. So I'll, I'll throw up these like the highlights to basically hundred percent. Then I won't also make the shadow mode black. I'll make it gray tone. I'll put it on normal for a second. I'll of course soften a little bit more over here too. I'll press okay. And now I'll put on the threshold. No, no. So I'm not sure why it's not working, but the only thing I am missing is the photocopy texture. So why not? I'll just drag one in just like so. He puts the blend mode on screen. And then over here, if I put this back on 90, okay, I'm starting to get the effect. Maybe I gotta throw mine up a little bit more. And maybe it just heavily depends on the texture itself. I mean, it's a different effect. And I'm pretty sure, again, it probably does flex based on the actual texture itself. Now, what if I use, hold on, drag in one of these bitmap textures instead. I'll put it on a nice little screen. The text is holding the shape and the actual texture creates the texture. Okay, so simple enough. I mean, this looks super dope itself, but I would say it heavily depends on your texture. So it's not maybe as effective or maybe as repeatable. So with this, I'll, I'll say, I'll say like mini W, like a lowercase W, but I still appreciate it, Sayana. All right, so the next one is a pixel art, quick pixel art in Adobe Illustrator by Uze. And it looks like he throws a picture and they throw a picture and put a little 50 50 in there outer actual edges of the picture you turn to a darker tone and then he just they just keep doing the same thing and i mean it looks like i'm just getting pixel art in like two seconds so i'm personally gonna type in a sword i'm gonna i don't, I don't need minecraft let's just do images which one do we want to turn into it can't be like that crazy it has to look pixel arty this is giving dragon dragon sword or any runescape fans no, just me. So I think I might extend my search by typing in sword clip art. It might give me more like generic look. Okay, yeah, this will give you more generic looking pixely kind of things. Like this guy looks like he deserves to be a pixel. Then what they seem to go, they go to where it says object, then they go create object mosaic. Then the tiles, they just change to 50, 50. And that's quite literally it. 50, 50, press okay. So now though, naturally you can't see it, but if I put a background layer below this, you obviously notice there's white still here. So the way you can get rid of that without also getting rid of the image for a second, right? The way you can get rid of that is go to select, we'll do same color fill. Oh, I gotta select the white first, then select same color fill. That'll delete all the white that's close enough in that sense, but I have to click on every single one of these. Oh God, this might take a second. Once they do this, right? They kind of cut out as much white as they need. What they end up doing is taking the edge of this. So I'm gonna just say like, I'll take the edge from, let's just start with the white first or the, the blue. So I'm gonna take the edge of this. I'm gonna select all the edges of this. Now you gotta choose a darker tone color. Now there's some already darker tone color blues in here. So I'm gonna take the darkest one, click it once and there you go. So, okay, you're gonna see a few different spots you might have to fix like that. It's not perfect, but it's not bad. Let me just do the, the handle real quick. Okay, I got the handle selected. I'm gonna click here. I'm gonna click a nice little dark gray. I need a, I need a way darker brown. I'm just gonna click over here. We're gonna use like over here, just choose like a really deep color, something like that. Now hear me out. If I was like a, a, you know, trying to create pixel art for my video game that I have zero idea how to use or make art or don't wanna go to an artist, it's not that bad. Like from picture, Picture comparison to here, it it does look like a, a pixel arted recreation. 
and it's not that bad i mean obviously you miss a lot of the detail it doesn't look as perfect you can't you just can't justify this as pixel art don't go doing that you're gonna get flamed i'm gonna flame you it's definitely gonna be the best way to do this in a fast rate so honestly w2 ooze because it's it's just a dope it's just a dope idea okay so this next effect is by baldo studios it's a lego effect now it's in spanish so i did i did a lot of screenshot it would translate but it seems like what they're doing is they're taking the actual photo itself uh or taking like a, like a square image putting a circle on it and a square using some bevel and emboss which is pretty simple to follow but they seem to take that square and make it a pattern after they make it a pattern they use mosaic to start the squares themselves and then they use pattern fill to put on that pattern that they made with the bevel and emboss onto the image and then change the layer style to something more appropriate which i'm guessing it's like lighter color or something like that and then voila you got yourself some lego portraits there might be a very specific point for this but i'm i'm down first things first new image new profile here we're gonna do a 100 it seems like he said right 100 by 100 pixels does he tell us the resolution no but i'm gonna gonna i'm gonna go at 300 for the culture press ok or press create he took a rectangle shape just like so if you uh you just saw how i clicked and i moved it just hold space you can move your rectangle just so it perfectly snaps click the edge over here as well boom now he made this gray then he also has a circle it seems pretty big as well i would just say like like yay big bevel and emboss they have about a hundred or so depth zero soften five size 141 what a weird angle but i'm gonna i'll follow and then 42 altitude i don't know what trauma trauma is what's trauma i guess it's still screen and i'll use 50 percent opacity multiplier it seems like this is on and this is at 50 and i'm gonna take a wild guess that the color is still black here then there seems to be a drop shadow. i want to say he uses drop shadow has it on multiply has it i'm guessing on black the opacity is 45 the spread is at six and then this is at five right here that looks correct to me okay boom and then he does the same thing to the rectangle here back over here we're doing something okay so now he goes to edit i think and i'm guessing it's defined pattern yep it is okay so we just use we'll do lego okay i got my pick Picture right there i mean if this works it works so now he goes into where it says filter pixelate mosaic he has the number at 100 squares i mean god i, I mean i don't know if this is gonna work because i can't even see the face then he goes to the image adjustments down here chooses pattern drop down this until we find our lego pattern and then throw this on a blend mode and i'm guessing it's gonna be something is it overlay oh it is overlay it's below the first one uh, yo I, I can't even front that is so funny. If I lower this down to 50 though, oh God, wait, that actually helps no matter what. I think 50 still works and also 100 still works because it just looks like four square like little Legos rather than like one big Lego. Yo, but honestly, I wish I can see the photo. Maybe if I get a better photo. All right, bang. Don't ask me why I got a whole bunch of LeBron James photos on deck. You'll see soon. I mean, it's still not fantastic though. If I just drag this on top, I mean, it's good. The, okay so the issue is he uses very iconic photos where if it's distorted a little bit you can kind of still tell what it is but what if i actually chose 50 squares and then i chose this over here and brought it down to 50 i mean it still works and you can definitely kind of tell now it's a little bit more of like a like a lebron james this opens up a lot of ideas for me when it comes to like uh, actually using pattern fills in this kind of way i'm saying this is the w what's your name again yeah baldo studios this is definitely a w very 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 niche but the concept and the execution is going to open a bunch of doors for someone watching this video including myself so i appreciate it okay so for the last one in this video i have zeet and he does this really cool warp effect in photoshop where he kind of takes a half of this sort of statue i got my own statue inside photoshop as we speak now he just kind of takes a single column row then he stretches it and then the stretch itself becomes a connector for the two parts of the head or in this case it could be pretty much anything probably like an object that's like super fun and in, the, in this kind of realm of just works like a statue just works it's probably not gonna work for like other photos of actual people i mean actually could be he just uses a little bit of curve some gradient map to give an effect and he just surrounds it with some other different little elements of things simple let's just give it a shot because it is as simple as it looks and i just want to i kind of want to do it i haven't done this before okay so i got my head in here i'll make it let's say a little bit tinier i'll do a little bit smaller so i can get some stretch action i'll take a rectangle marquee tool select half of my face just like so i don't want to 
do much around the eye because I think it's probably important that we keep some of that uh, context just for the image itself. Right click, layer via cut, stretch that over here this way. This one will be right here. Then I'll go ahead and use the same mercury selection, but I'll use single column row. Then I'll get close, select one pixel, right click, layer via copy. Seems easy enough so far. Control T and then hold shift and then stretch it. Bang. He uses, I believe it's right click distort, connects this point with this point, scrolls down, connects this point with this point. Let's throw in a nice little gradient on this. And right after that, you know you gotta add something, just something special. What's more special than effect register right in the middle? What can I say? I can be an apparel artist. To be very honest with you, the look is there. I mean, it, it just it just feels it just feels like something you're familiar with that you always probably wondered like not how they did it, but why they did it, and then you do it, and then you realize there's something to it. That's how I'm feeling right now. I don't know. Either way, that oh. Anyway, with that being said, that is the end of the video here today. So hopefully one of these four effects, or I don't know how many, actually, I think it was four, you guys enjoyed. I learned something. I learned a few different executions, which is pretty freaking dope. But the whole plan of this is you can use the effect verbatim for as you guys saw it today or through the TikToks themselves. But the real thing you want to take away here is how they did it. And then can you switch something else out and then create a whole new effect? And maybe that effect itself becomes what propels you and, and just makes you really cool. And then I steal it creatively regardless so hq out you're gonna get a key smile and stay positive and stay freaking productive, guys and much love peace enjoy your day enjoy the everything pack if you guys purchase it i would say if it was me i would do it love you guys bye